Should we pray for our government leaders? Well, the simple answer is yes. In 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2, Paul talks about praying for all people. That includes the kings and the authorities. We should be praying for our government leaders. That's the president. That's our governors. That's our mayors. That's our police chiefs, fire chiefs, whoever in those situations that are serving within the government. We should be praying for them. And we should be good citizens as Christians. In Romans 13, 1 through 7, it says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be un unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render therefore to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, and honor and to honor. We should be subject to the governing authorities. This may not be a very popular passage, but it is a passage of scripture, and God has commanded us to be subject to the governing authorities. And the reason that we should be subject to them is because God has appointed them. He has allowed them to be in their roles of authority. And, you know, this obedience here, being subject to them, is without regard to the competency of our government leaders, the morality of our government leaders, or anyone in that sense. There are absolutely no qualifiers there. And, you know, it's because it's for God's purpose that he's appointed those leaders. And sometimes those may be bad leaders. you got to remember that whenever Paul wrote Romans, Nero was the emperor. Nero persecuted Christians tremendously in history. Paul gave no exception there. And, you know, there is only one exception, though. And Paul would agree with this as well. So we're to be a subject to the governing authorities. But that one exception is when they command us to disobey God. You know, Paul was under arrest and different things happened to him because he was really going against some of the authorities, but it was because he was not going to disobey God. He wasn't going to be quiet about God. And, you know, we see all through the Bible in Exodus, the midwives refused to kill the baby boys in Egypt. We see in the book of Daniel, Daniel and also Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego refused to worship false gods. and They faced the punishments of the government because of that. In Acts, we see Peter and John, they were told to stop preaching about Jesus. And obviously they didn't stop doing that. So, you know, yes, we need to pray for these leaders, these government leaders, because they are appointed by God. They are. You know, even the pagan Romans realized that when the Christians were gathering together, when there was pagan leaders there, they, they were still praying for those leaders. They understood that it was good to have Christians praying for the people there. And, you know, whether you agree or disagree with the orders that have come down from the lockdown, quarantine and all those different things. Remember that disobedience is really disobedience against God. Because look at verse 2. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinances of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. So again, if you agree or disagree with it, realize that being disobedient to what the government's asking you to do, if it's not to disobey God, if you are going out and opening your business when you're told not to open your business, despite the fact you may not agree with that, if the government has commended that and you disobey, you really are disobeying God there. And civil punishment will come. You have to realize that when you are disobedient to government leaders that you will be punished in that. Little Street Stevens Creek Baptist Church, we have been having porch preaching while we've had this lockdown and this is We've made sure that we check with the government orders and, you know, the churches are listed as essential. We checked with the State Department of Commerce, had conversations with them and also with the police to make sure that what we were doing, keeping the congregation in their cars, was uh, really following the law. We were continuing to be good citizens and we should be good citizens. And, you know, the government was really put in place to re reward good and to restrain evil. And, you know, in general, even a corrupt government deters crime to some degree. Be a good citizen. In verse 4 there it says, For he is God's minister to you for good. 
But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain, for he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. God's minister. He gives law and order to society and what's going on here. And you know, it's a, a blessing for us to have law and order. And even if we were under a pagan government, Paul used his Roman rights to have a trial under that. And also in this passage, it shows that the government has the right to do capital punishment. That's totally a sermon for another time, but they have authority that's been granted to them by God there, and we should obey them. Look at verse 5. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. So, you know, we should be obeying the government orders, not because we fear being punished, but for conscience sake, because we realize that God has ordained government leaders to be in place. And again, the only time that we are to disobey the government is if they're telling us to disobey God. That's it. In verse 6, it talks about paying taxes. So unfortunately, that is in the Bible there. And even Jesus talked about it in Matthew 22, 21. To render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. Again, we got a distinction of obeying God and obeying government there. So, you know, we need to give respect to the government leaders that we have, but also respect to God. Never forget that. We need to pray for our government leaders that they have wisdom working through all these different things with the coronavirus, with opening back up the economy and how to deal with all these different bills in Congress and everything like that. We need to pray that they have wisdom because they really, really need wisdom in the things they do. And also to have courage to do what's right, even if it's not popular opinion. Courage to do what's right. And pray that God is honored through all of this and all that our government leaders do. Not all our government leaders are Christians. And we should pray for them. We should pray for their conversion. But we should pray that God uses them in whatever capacity he has set for them. We should be a good citizen. And remember that God has appointed the leaders that we have. Seek first the kingdom and honor God above all. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for directing us to your word to understand that the government leaders that we have were appointed by you and for a purpose, and for a time, and it does restrain evil and reward good in many ways. And a lot of times we may be frustrated by the things that our government does, but help us to remember that if our government is not commanding us to disobey you, that we should be willing to submit to our government. We should be willing to obey the authorities. That is your word, Lord, what you have commanded. But help us always to have the right distinction to understand what it is to obey the government versus obeying you by knowing your word and knowing what it means to follow you and obey you above all things. And I pray for wisdom for our leaders and the decisions they have to make for and opening back up the economy and, and just all the different things each day that they're bombarded with, that they would have wisdom in that and to um, be able to do the things that are right and above all to honor you in it all. And I pray you just give us continual wisdom, Lord, in being good citizens. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.